Hello everyone, my name is Angelica and welcome to my channel. For today's video, I've prepared something slightly different. Since I started my journey on YouTube, I've created many home decor items using air dry clay. Those videos are very popular among other videos and projects on my channel. So I've decided to pick my top favorite uh, air dry clay projects and put them together in one longer video. I like working with air dry clay, so it was quite hard to pick only 10 projects, but I tried to choose um, the most unique ones and the ones which in my opinion came out almost as good as you would get them from the shop. So with that being said, let's jump right into the first project. Before I start the work of any clay project, I like to protect my worktop with greaseproof paper. It makes it much easier to clean, like also helps removing the unrolled clay from the table. I always take the amount of clay I need and knead it between my hands. Clay after contact with the warm from your hands and body becomes much softer and more flexible to work with. I've also got my rolling pin, which I only use for crafts. To create this wall hanging, I roll out piece of clay flat to the same thickness. Using round a cookie cutter, I cut out five identical circles. To be able to hang them on the wall, I need to create a hole, which will help me to connect each piece to the wooden dowel. I basically found random item which I will be able to create small holes with. So this is my full moon. Now I'm going to create other face of the moon. For next two circles, I'm cutting half of them out. Going with my finger, I smooth the edges down. And then again, I'm creating holes on the top of each shape. For last two pieces, I'm cutting out three quarter of the whole shape. To make them identical, I place one ready shape on the hole and cut it the same place. After a few days of drying, clay become hard and more durable. I take sanding block and sand down any imperfections. Of course, still be uh, quite uh, gentle while doing it as the pieces are quite small and thin so they might break if you put too much pressure. Now pick up your favorite color and paint them. I've chosen gold acrylic paint and I paint each piece all around a few times. Once the paint is dry, I can start attaching them to my dowel. I simply take cotton cord and make double knot to tie both parts together. Then one extra string to the top for hanging it on the wall and my moon wall decor is ready. This was one of my first air dry clay projects I've created and I still like how it looks and the vibe it brings to the room. To create this braided vase, I will be using air dry clay but in almost terracotta color. I will also be using tin. I roll out this clay and divide it into smaller parts. Each of these parts I roll with my hands to create long and thin kind of strings. Cut this piece in half and then fold it in half. Length of this clay should match the height of your tin. Place two same length pieces next to each other and start twisting them in opposite direction away from each other. Lay them closer to each other and press them slightly together to connect it. This way I've created one of many braids. I repeat the process to create enough braids to cover my entire litin. Then I take one braid at a time and place it on the tin. I wrap each end around the edge of the tin and press it slightly down. Then I do the same with each braid. Once it's all covered, I roll another piece of clay and wrap it on the top of the vase, just to add some extra detail and finish it off. 
I really like the terracotta color. You can always um, use different clay or just spray paint it once it's dry. To create nice round shape out of clay, you will need any size of bowl. Place it upside down on the clay and trace it along the line. Remove the excess clay and lift your bowl. Place cling film on the bowl, which shape you want to recreate. Cling film will help with removing the clay from the bowl when it's dry. Take your round piece of clay and move onto the bowl. Tap the sides slightly to, so they stick to the bowl. With the excess clay, cut it off and join two ends together. In situations like this, water and brush come very helpful. To create small holes around the bowl edges, you would ideally need something that actually cuts the holes out. I didn't have anything like this, so instead I used some pointy tool, which I press down and move around to create holes. I try to keep the same distance between each hole. Once the all holes were done, I've left it to fully dry. After that time, I remove it gently and using sanding paper, I sanded down all the edges and imperfections. To make it a bit stronger, like also protect from humidity, I apply thick layer of gloss mod podge. You of course can use matte one, it doesn't really matter. I apply it inside and outside the bowl. Now it's time to create this unique detail for this bowl. I take quite thick cord and measure four lengths of the bowl's edge. Then I take needle with the contrasting color thread and tie it to the first hole, keeping the thick cord in between. I go from the inside of the bowl through the second hole, hold it in place and then push the needle through the next hole. This way the pink thread is pulled tight and holds the thick cord in place. I carry on with this process all the way around the bowl. Once the first level is completed, I move the cord uh, above the first one. Now, instead of going through the hole, I push the needle just under the first row of cord. I pull it up and carry on to the next spot. Same with the next cord, I tie it to the cord placed below. I cut off the excess cord and my bowl is ready. I like the contrasting colors of white and pink. Different color or cord will also look great. This project is actually from my Christmas related video. I really like it so I've decided to include it in here anyway. I will be using templates which I've created from craft paper. They are basically one third of circle. I've glued two pieces of paper together to make it a bit stronger. I roll up the clay, move the template on the top of it and cut the exact shape out. I take the paper part and roll it to create cone. Glue it with any glue to secure it. Then I take the clay part and wrap it around the paper cone. I cut out the excess clay and connect two ends together. To help uh, with this process, you can always use some sponge and water. I take my plastic cutter and start creating star shaped holes around the cone. Of course, you can create any shapes. As I said before, this was the Christmas episode, that's why I'm using stars. But to be honest, I think they are universal and you keep, can keep them out all year round. Once the clay dries, I remove the paper part and the tea holder is ready. I recommend using battery power candle, not the fire one. For the next project, you will need small round plate. Roll out piece of clay and cut out the rectangle shape. Then divide this piece into same size straps. All together, I will need seven of them and they are as long as the diameter of the plate is. Before I place them on the plate, I wrap some cling film around it. 
and then smooth the edges of each piece of the clay. I place four straps horizontally and three vertically, creating waving effect. It's very easy, just take one strap and go with it above the opposite one, then under, above and so on. Once this is completed, I leave it this position until fully dry. Pick up your favorite acrylic paint and paint the whole tray. To make it more outstanding, I take old toothbrush, which I dip in darker color paint and splash it above the tray, creating this unique pattern. And again, to protect it, I apply a thick layer of Mod Podge. After creating this tray for the first time, I was really impressed with the result. It looks very high-end and modern. To create flower pot out of clay, find the right side plastic container and wrap it with cling film. It's important that the container is plastic so you can squeeze it later when removing it from the clay. Roll out big piece of clay and take the measurements from your container. This way you will know how big piece you need. Using ruler cut out the rectangle shape which later wrap around the container. This way you created sides of your planter. When you connect two ends together, you can make some small cuts on the one end, water another end and then just press both of them together. For the bottom of my planter, I roll out another piece of clay. I place my pot on top of it and then trace the exact shape as the bottom of my container. And then by tapping slightly, connect both of these pieces together. Now it's time to create the nose. I take a small piece of clay, which I knit between my hands so it becomes softer. Then I start shaping the nose shape. It's some kind of triangle with one side flat. Once I, I achieve the right shape, I attach it to the pot. With the knife, I create small cuts which reflect the lips. For both opposite sides of the pot, I'm adding three small balls as a special detail to the whole construction. Before I leave it to dry, I go around with water to smooth out any imperfections. Once it's dry, squeeze the plastic container and with gentle moves remove it. As you can see, there is a small crack inside the pot. It's not actually the crack, it's just where the connection of the two ends is. But that's not a problem, I take a small piece of clay which I dip in the water and then fill the gap with. To create texture effect on my pot, I'm adding baking soda to my paint and then using brush, I apply it all around my pot. For the edges, I decided to paint them gold. And to secure the inside of the pot from any damages or humidity, I applied a thick layer of Mod Podge. I really like this pot, you can uh, often see it on my intro, it's just so unique and looks high-end. To create cactus wall hanging, I've created templates which after putting together reflect the cactus shape. I take each piece and transfer it its shape onto the clay. At first I go with pencil and trace the lines around and then I take sharp knife and cut those shapes out. I put them in the position they are going to hang on the wall and start creating small holes to be able to connect them all together. To create a pattern on each piece of the clay, I will be using metal wire. I fold it in half, creating a little loop at the one end. And with these three pieces from the right, I'm going diagonally down, creating some sort of ditches. One is in the center, plus two extra on each side. 
For the arm parts of the cactus, I just create small irregular dents. Once it's all dry, I give it a quick sanding. Using dark green acrylic paint, I paint all the parts all around. Small dents I'm filling with brown color paint. To give it more gloss, I apply Mod Podge. I place all the pieces in the right position, so now it's time to connect them all together. I make a small knot at the front of the piece and then go through the other hole. And I do the same when connecting two separate pieces together. If you're a plant lover, this would be a great addition to your collection. To create bell shape, you will need some item which its shape reflects the bell shape. I found this candle which I think would work perfectly. I take a few measurements from this dish and transfer them onto my clay. This part will create the wall of the bell. Now I have to create top for it. And like in the previous project, I place the item on the top of the clay and cut uh, the round shape out. This candle will work as my mold and to be able to remove the clay from it, I secure it with greaseproof paper. Try to make it as smooth as you can so you won't get any uneven shapes inside of the bell. Starting with the rectangle shape, I wrap it around the candle. I press it down so it takes the exact shape. I cut out the excess clay and connect two ends together. And then I add the top of the bell. To smooth the surface, I use the sponge which I dip in the water. With the sharp knife, I straighten the edge of the bell and then remove it slightly from the candle. To make small hole at the top, I'm using metal straw, but it can be any item which makes holes. Altogether, I've created three bells. Even they are white, I apply extra white paint on them. And then with the black paint and thin brush, I've created some pattern on them. Of course, these bears are more for the decorative purpose, so I'm only placing inside of it the wooden bit. I make few knots to secure it in one place and then add more beads on the string for nicer finish. They look super cute hanging from the wall. You can of course customize them whichever way you want by adding more color or different pattern. This is a project for someone who loves plants but forgets about watering them. I take a piece of clay which I divide into smaller, irregular parts. I take one piece at a time and I roll it between my hands to create the ball. Then I take this ball and roll it between my hands again, this time creating more of the cone shape. I press it all down to flatten it. This way I've created one of many parts of the zebra plant. As you can see, I've made many similar pieces. I've tried to create different sizes of them. I put them all on toilet roll to hold the right shape. Before I leave them to dry, I'm going to attach metal wire to each of them. I push the wire slightly into the thicker end of the leaf. Deep enough so the wire stays in one position. After they are all dry, I can start painting them. I start with the green paint and then with the white paint and thin brush, I create horizontal lines. Once that is dry, I cover them all with mod podge for gloss effect. Starting with the most pointy part, I wrap all the other leaves around it. 
one at a time. Twisting the wire helps to hold them all together in one position. I add another part to next pair space around the center piece. I take terracotta pot, I place some paper on the bottom and then start filling it with sand. I put my zebra plant inside and then I top it up with sand. I think it came out looking very realistic and cute. This project was my recent thrift flip. I've got this lamp for a pound from thrifting store. I roll out big piece of clay which I'm moving onto this lamp. I basically create code for my lamp. I press it all down to reflect the exact lamp shape and with the knife I cut out any excess clay. For the empty space I roll out extra piece of clay and I fill it with it. All this connection don't have to be super perfect as I'm going to create very busy butter on it anyway. Only make sure that they are connected together and staying in the right place. I cut out the hole for the cable and straighten the bottom of the lamp. To create some kind of honeycomb pattern, I will be using plastic icon, but it can be anything what creates small around dents. I'm going with my icon diagonally creating one row at the time. Dents don't have to be perfect, that's what creates this unique look. And then I create another row just next to the first one. It's super satisfying process. Once the lap was fully covered with dents, I left it till dry. I remove top part of the lamp and secure it with paper tape like also the cable. I give it a good spray paint. I take the gold paint and sponge roller and I slightly go with it around the lamp. This way you only paint the edges of dents, leaving them clean and white inside. I really like how this lamp turned out, something very different to what I was usually doing with the clay before. I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did, don't forget to give a big thumb up and subscribe to my channel as I post new content every single Wednesday. I will leave all the links to the original videos down below, like also I created separate playlists with all my air dry clay projects. And for now, thank you so much for watching, have a lovely week and I will see you in my next video. Bye!